Hello everyone and welcome back. This is the Motorcycle Rescuer. I am Charlie, the Motorcycle Rescuer. Um, the footage you just saw, or you're about to see, is of me riding the XJ550 back from Aidens. Um, it's got some sort of intermittent fault. So I have been to see this bike a few times and um, it, the fault hasn't shown on me and you saw the ride there, the fault didn't show on me. Aiden's quite clear it normally needs to be 15, 20 minutes into a ride for it to happen. And then something stumbles with the, um, the revs. So I, f I believe they build up. I believe the revs build up and um, it gets a bit erratic. So there's very clearly some sort of carb issue there. Uh, but I would like to hear it. I would like to kind of hear it to see exactly what we're working with. But So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this bike on and idling um, and while I'm kind of ripping it down. And we'll have a good look. There's a, there's a bunch of things this could be, guys. The, one of the carbs or two of the carbs could be overfueling. That could be spilling out. That could be fueling into the cylinders, going into the oil. Um, that's highly unlikely because the bike just wouldn't run this well for a certain amount of time. I believe it's something more simple. I believe either the, a choke is sticking on one of the carbs. So even though the choke appears to be going off all of them, I believe it's possibly sticking on one or something may be interfering with the throttle. Now the throttle cable itself is loose, I've checked that. Um, I'll show you again on camera in a minute by turning it left and right, that it doesn't accelerate the bike. So it may be on the actual linkage part or something's rattled in there and it's blocking one of the throttles. Something silly, I, I believe it will be. The kind of last thing it could be in my head is the diaphragms. If one or two of the diaphragms are a bit past it, like we saw on the CB250 recently, then it can just be running a little bit erratic, although it wouldn't, it wouldn't rev up, guys. It would be the opposite. So my genuine belief here is that something at some point is either blocking this. See the cable here? Something's blocking or sticking or... You know, not returning, something like that. I'm going to have a good look at it, and we're going to see. That's interesting, and all. You see that setup there? That setup um, I've not seen before. It's probably a um, some sort of well cable joining thing, which I've never seen before. But look, that max is out there. So this little engine probably isn't running at full power, yet it runs beautifully. Uh, again, I do think there might be some sort of choke issue. If at this stage right now I do just punch on the choke, so the choke's on fully. So you see you've got one here, one there. Ah, hang on a minute. The other two aren't up. Can you see that? Can you see the other two aren't up? Let's have a look. Nope. Is that up? I can't tell. Let me. I'm going to play with the choke. Oh, it is. Oh, they are. They're just they're going at some sort of weird angle. That's very weird. Um, so I, I did kind of I did wonder if the choke was sticking on, but it looks really greased. It really looks like it's greased well. Um, and the choke cable I wondered about, but again, it is just flowing so well and it's all greased. Ah, <sighs> so. Let's keep at this. You see, I, can, I take the choke off. The chokes do come fully off, unless there is a tiny bit of hesitation. It's hard to tell from here. All right, so we're going to keep playing with this. What I'm going to do is, is like I said, idle it up. I am going to grease all of these wires anyway throughout the bike, just in case um, the wires are getting stiff and sticky. And then I will pop off the air box if it's easy enough to do, just to see what's going on with the slides, make sure all the slides lift up and down nicely. That will tell us if the diaphragms are okay. And then, um, and then, yeah, I don't know, just, just hope, really. I, I don't know from there, if I'm being honest, guys. It, it, it obviously isn't something particularly straightforward. See, that's grease. This bike's been greased lovely. That's grease. Uh, so we'll take it apart. I'm going to idle it up for a little while and then we'll take it apart. In fact, let's do a spray test. Let's do a steering test and a spray test. 
see if there's any extra air going in. Okay guys, so to check the, the actual throttle linkage cable, give it a pull. Make sure nothing's happening, you see that? Pull on it, push on it, steer fully left. Make sure you don't turn it when you do that, steer fully right. So there's no linkage, uh, there's no problems there with the throttle cable being too tight. That's a great start. Um, I'm going to do a spray test on this bike now. So if we hear the engine note change, remember if it goes higher or lower, then there's some sort of air leak. There we go, we've got some brake fluid guys, highly flammable. Let's get that spraying in, let's listen to the engine note, higher or lower. So definitely nothing to do with airflow there guys, you can hear the engine note didn't change at all, so no, no it didn't rise, it didn't fall. Um, so that's an okay start there, I guess, I think we're going to have to pop the, I mean really I'd like to hear it, I mean really I need to let it idle for a while, see if we get to that stage where it starts doing it. But I am going to start pulling bits off, so that we, um, so that we can see, you know, what's going on. So give me a minute, I'm going to take the rear seat off and the side panels so that we've got a little bit more of an idea of what's going on. So guys, I'm, I'm not seeing any issues at all. It's, it's annoying. It's frustrating. Uh, obviously, it's not silly. He knows what's going on. I just don't see it every time. And I've, the spray test was your kind of first port of call. Too much air getting in and then it gets up to temperature and you've got a bit too much air and it runs lean and it revs up. Uh, other than that, there's not that much else, you know, that could be going on, really. Uh, the bike's revving fine. It's been running now for 15 minutes. I drove it here. But what I don't want to do is just grease all the linkages again and give it back to Aiden. I, I don't want him to keep having these problems. I thought there might be a bit of a fuel spill, maybe. He said there was a bit of smoke last time. Although that could be through just over revving. Uh, yeah. Now there is bits of smoke coming off the engine, but this is an air-cooled engine, um, so they do get very hot, especially when they're not running right right now, and even if it's running, bits of smoke on an old engine like this isn't abnormal because of cleaning products and tiny little oil drips and stuff like that. Oh, hang on. The revs have gone up. That's definitely not linkage related.
Let's see if we can make it a bit more erratic. Now we're looking for um, any fuel drops, maybe? There you go. Okay, so it is revving, look at that. That's unbelievable. That does not make sense. So I've lowered the idle a touch, guys, and I know that's not necessarily... But I'm wondering if... I'm wondering if this bike is now at temperature, you see, so... I'm wondering if the whole time I set the revs to it not... I'm wondering if it takes for 15, 20 minutes to get its temperature. Um, so I've just adjusted the idle, I mean that's, let's see what happens now. This bike is insured and, and taxed and everything, so I can take it for a good spin later, and we'll see. Uh, I, I'm definitely going to pop this tank off. But I know it's not a linkage problem, I know it's nothing like that, because, um, because it, it, the idle changed there. I also know uh, without me doing any of that, and I also know it's not an air leak. So, uh, interesting this one. I've lowered the revs. It might be climbing again, is it? I'm going to watch this for a while, guys. I'm going to keep it on and watch it for a bit. So, I think at this stage, guys, there obviously is something going on. I'm going to pop the tank off. Let's get a little bit more look at the carbs. I'd like to pull the um, air filter back and I'd like to check the suction, the diaphragms, just make sure they're all moving up and down like they should and they're in order. Um, I think that that's kind of my only, one might be a bit, a bit caked up or something and might be a bit crusty on the top, so that, that is an option. Uh, check all the breather pipes just in case something's going on there and some sort of backflow. Uh, but again, with the spray test, that would have shown you any of them problems. So for me, it's tank off. Look for obvious fuel spills, which there just aren't any. I'm not concerned about the wires, but I will grease the wires. It's definitely not kind of a stuck wire issue or anything like that, because you can see it all there, look. It's all flowing, and, and it was rising. The revs were rising when we weren't there. If they were rising on acceleration and getting stuck, then that would be a different story and that's not what was happening so whew, where do we go from here uh, genuinely I don't know let's pop the carbs off it won't hurt to give them a, a bit of a clean if they're easy enough to get off um, and we'll check the diaphragms on the top to make sure they they seem to be in good working order I think that's the next step for me on this bike I know this airbox is a right pain in the ass that's going to make the carb removal a pain in the ass, but the bike needs to be right for Aiden, so we'll make it happen. This is one of them bikes, guys, that you've got a proper manhandle to get it all out. Like the battery case is just a pain in the ass. I didn't break it though, it's safely over there. But, um, yeah, some bikes are just, they're so tight together. Some bikes they pull it all in in the factory as well and you literally can't get it out so um, you'd have to drop the engine. Uh, this is almost definitely one of them. So I just need to be able to get the airbox back a touch to bring the carbs out. I think it's going to be easier to pop the carbs off fully on this occasion than it is to get the airbox out. Uh, and at the moment you've got this much room to be able to make enough gap there to be able to get that, that out of there. It's looking tight so uh let's keep cracking on 
Right guys, I had to switch the spice scales off to show you this so I don't get another copyright infringement. Although by mentioning them, do I get that anyway? Don't know. Uh, also, don't worry about my mental health. It's all good at the moment. Uh, so yeah, there's the calves. We're going to pop them off. I'm going to look at the bowls, tip them upside down, shake them about a bit, look like I know what I'm doing, and uh, clean them out, might as well, and check the diaphragms. So uh, let's get them to the bench. It wasn't too, too difficult. I did use Nat Knacker's yards technique in here. So you push these back because the airbox moves such a minimal amount. But to be fair, there is kind of, there's, there's a nice enough space here, guys. We can make this work. So I'm uh, confident at the moment. And I'll just check all the linkages and, and give it a bit of a clean. And we'll see what's going on. Uh, I may do a bench fuel test, just just put some fuel through it, and we'll see um, we'll see kind of what happens if it if it's spilling out of any carb, but I doubt it.